Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a good morning. We are asking the question today in light, Paul. In light of yesterday, Nathan Fletcher's announcement yesterday, do you support the reclosure of certain businesses here in San Diego County? Well, that couldn't have been worded any better. First of all, can we, you know, because I'm very busy with social media. Let me make so sure that you can hear us. People are hearing so us. hand me my phone. Anybody out there? Uh, give hey, me Natalie, th can you hear us? Natalie, can you hear us? Can you give us a thumbs up? Shelly, can you hear us? We're going to see what the time delay is from the time we ask. Mark is back. That is who I wanted to talk to. Hey, Mark. Hi, Mark. I like y'all's little arguments. What are you talking about? You and Mark's. Oh, we can. All right, Shelly, great. So the conference. So the question is pretty obvious. And I'll tell you what, you look like a genius yesterday because you had anticipated the. Um, that was actually your question. I know, I, I, but I wanted to give you credit for it. I was um, anticipating, you know, once the. Nathan Once, Fletcher. When I, see, I don't even. I think what pre precipitated Newsom's decision was seeing the governor in Texas and in Arizona. And I'm going to say a word that's going to trigger people here, but I think they got weak need and they got scared by the rising COVID test results and the number. We're finding out a lot of people have COVID-19. A lot of people don't even know they have COVID-19, right? and that made that panicked. Because they're so afraid that if if one uh, you know if, if the system gets swamped or if there's a rash of deaths that they will be blamed come November that they are erring on the side of caution and, and it's just barred right yeah and and, and, and like they haven't closed gyms with all today. due respect to the politicians and the health officials who don't see why that is a valid question about how can the protest be okay but the Bars can't be. It's it's. it's I mean, they it's laughable. The gyms, have they? No, but that's coming. You know, I'll be. I, I'm gonna say it here. I will not be shocked that in anticipation of everybody coming down from L.A. to use our beaches, I will not be shocked if our people close the beaches for Fourth of July weekend. Man, that's gonna stink. I know, but does anybody out there think I'm? Uh, think I'm? I'm being too jaded. Not fair to shut down the ones that were c complying, shut down the ones. I agree. I, I think everybody are being. And what business up. of it is of uh, his, um, Gonzalez, to uh, tell me what I, what is a meal and what isn't? Boy, Mark, I said that exact same thing on Good Morning San Diego this morning. This was about Fourth of July and the fact that the beaches were going to be packed and. That sends a message of people, wall to wall people. That was going to be, uh, that was going to scare the politicians. But um, hey, can I go grab my phone? Because there are a couple things that we're going to have to address as civilians. Because we can bitch about this all we want. Really, at the end of the day, the people to blame are us. We elected the people that are making these decisions. We signed off on the assembly bill that gives the health officials supreme power in times of crisis, unelected officials. So the blame is at our feet. We can wail about it all we want to, but you get the leadership you elect. And I hope a lot of folks who are uh, who are bent out of shape about this remember this come November because... Well, I think this is waking up a lot of people to the you'd like to legisl think so. legislative process and the fact that they're saying, okay, we can fix this, but... It's going to require a lot of people getting out and voting. Yeah, uh, frankly, I don't think they're. I, I think California doesn't have an. And you know, and I, I don't even blame the Democrats because I, I really blame the Republicans because, in in lieu of all the, can I can I have ten seconds to be on a soapbox? In lieu of all the issues this great state has, from ed, from its education to uh, tax, you know. It's, tax structure. There are a lot of flaws that are, can lie at the feet of a progressively 
democratic state that's been that way for decades. And so you can easily blame the Democrats because it's been one party rule. But I really blame is the Republicans who, in, who with all this ammunition as far as a faulty education, a faulty infrastructure, and you can't mount an opposition to the current one party rule, really, if you can't come up with a counter argument, well then, it says I right hear Fletcher is very patronizing. He said, "Don't listen to your cousin on Facebook. How does he know what our cousins do for a living?" I agree with that because he also said something like, uh, "Don't want to die and don't want to get your hair cut or something like that." Yesterday, and I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of people that make their living on cutting hair, and there's a lot of people that you know make their living working at gyms. And every I, time he cuts something, I think his salary should be cut in half. What I mean, we. The, uh, we that's the one thing that would I would have infinitely more respect for the, the our leading our leaders our political class if they all voluntarily took the same haircut that the rest of us took or or even half of what the rest of us took just so they can say that they're we're in the same boat but they're unaffected by the policies that they are dictating and putting on the rest of us. I say I think it's ridiculous he attributed swine cases to bars, house parties, and small gatherings, and who was adamant the cases were not connected to political protests yeah. with thousands of people. Uh, I, I totally agree. I with think that. He, if he had they a mulligan, didn't even ask the question. He'd probably want to take that one over again. But you know, <clears throat> right now, I, I said back in uh, March that we would be full throttle come July. So my my prediction of how COVID nineteen was going to go here in California and in the rest of the country is going to be flat out wrong because we are going to sit closed through the month of July, and it's, it's for a lot of folks it's going to be a death knell for their businesses. And well, my heart breaks um, from it. Uh, uh, go get your phone. Yeah, watch. Well, um, I just wanted to. It's going to be uh, tough, but you know, and Paul's exactly right. You know, we have a voice in all of this, and to sit by and idly let these politicians do whatever that they want to do. For whatever reason they're doing it because i do not think the virus is fake i don't think it i think it's exactly real but i do think the uh the good to see you again decisions after the virus has become very politicized all elected officials should earn a minimum wage plus fletcher is a puppet for his wife uh you know All right, so this is where I think uh, we have to start. That was a comment, by the way, I was reading. Yeah, I know. I know. Hang on a second. Hang on. But this is um, this is AB 262 that we all voted in. Addition to the Act, uh, this is Section 1, Section 120175.5 to the Health and Safety Code. In addition to the actions required under subdivision, A, the local health officer may issue orders to other governmental entities with the local health officer's jurisdiction to take any action the local health officer deems necessary to control the spread of the communicable disease. So that is AB 262. That's where we have to start because I don't, I'm uncomfortable with an unelected official having that kind of... Uh, now, people will out argue, well, you need it to be an unelected official because if they're subject to uh, being voted out of office, then they're never going to make a decision that they think, you know, they will always acquiesce to the mob. Well, and so, here's, a, here's another thing, and but, Carl DeMaio said this many, uh, several, a couple of years ago, though, and, it, and it woke me up to the way that the bills are written on when you're voting on them, is that they can write those bills however they want to. You know, they can say, okay, for a gas tax hike or whatever it is that you're actually voting on, they can put, you know, do you not want puppies killed? And if you vote yes, you don't want puppies killed, then they can say whatever they want. They can write it however they want it to write. Uh, to say however they want it to say. And it is very misleading for the voters. But, uh, yeah. And so, no, no telling what that actually said in the ballot when, when, when it was yeah when it was, it was, it was, do you want uh, a healthy cities or whatever so what do we do I mean right now we're, we're, we have to sit idle you know and I just think I think a lot of this has become politicized yeah and I know everyone's going to start rolling their eyes I don't want to 
I don't want people rolling. Oh, I don't think anybody right. disagrees with you. I don't think everybody I've talked to thinks this thing sucks. Mm-hmm. The virus is real. The response to the virus has been very poor. So we wait basically. So let's let's play this out. We're now in mid July, and cases are still skyrocketing like they are. But the death rate is still where it is. What do we do? Do we say okay, the case fatality rate is near near lower than flu levels, and we just say okay, everybody go back, or are we going to sit in this limbo indefinitely, waiting on a vaccine that may or may not come, that may or may not be at best fifty percent effective? Are we going to are we going to sacrifice another semester of school for kids waiting for this to burn itself out? I can out? tell you, it's all right. We had, we talked about this a month ago. Nothing is going to be stopped until after the election. And even depending on who wins, well, that that, that would suggest that this is more about uh, Olymp- than you're saying, but this is more about winning a presidential election than it is about health care. Well, how can I you mean, say that, Mark? There's over 125,000 people have passed away, have succumbed to this. Well, how, what do you say to those families? I am saying that the virus is real. The response to the virus has, you know, what's has become very politicized and. What's, who said, don't ever let a good crisis go to waste? Whoever said Saul, that? Saul Lewinsky, was it? Um, and that's what I think we're saying. You know, I mean, we don't need, the, we, we damn sure don't need Fletcher telling us what is a meal and what isn't a meal. We, you know, and just in thinking in another universe with different kind of leaders, maybe a hundred years ago we would be saying, okay, sure, the, rate, the cases are going up, death. Uh, capacity at hospitals inching out but not a crisis yet let's soldier on we can we're gonna fight through this a whole different my mi- uh, in a parallel universe there'd be a different way to handle this well, the same way they handled yeah. it back in the 50s and the 60s they said okay look this is what's going on take the necessary precautions but they didn't shut down every business they didn't shut down all the economy I believe they are playing hardball because the more they continue the crisis, the more federal funds they will get or potentially get. Cindy Beck. What was what was the what were the two pandemics of the fifties and the sixties? Uh, well, one was I, I, I don't know what it's uh, you, I, you can't you can't call it the Hong Kong flu anymore, but it was I think sixty eight was whatever now they call the Hong Kong flu, and that was uh, that was infinitely worse than what we're dealing right now. But you know what? A lot of people died back then. Maybe this is the way to do it. I just don't think it is. I, I think I think we are a better country when we are strong economically. I love you guys' show, but keep freezing. It makes it hard to watch. Says Cindy. Are we freezing up? Anybody else getting that besides Cindy? Stop the protests. Uh, anybody else freezing up? Stella, are you freezing up? Let's say the say they had smallpox uh, in 1958. The Asian flu. They had. Um, let's see. Mark, please don't go with that remdesivir argument because. Are you talking to me? No, no, I'm talking about Mark Robert. Uh, supposedly. Because that that knocks what, 48 hours off the symptoms. It's hardly. The only difference between remdesivir and hydroxy hydroxychloroquine was one had a presidential uh, stamp of approval the other did not so one was um, one was SOL and the other wasn't yeah the Hong Kong flu and the polio are the two but what's now the proper way to refer to the Hong Kong flu I have no idea it's like it's numbers I'm so damn tired of being politically correct well thankfully you, you aren't very often <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so let's. Uh, I'm the only one who. Can, oh, Mark, Eric, I love the guy. He should be in Pittsburgh. You know, he should be in Texas. Is where he should be. Who? Eric. Am I the only one who can't stand Mark Mathis? He seems like he should be in Cincinnati or Pittsburgh. Why? Cincinnati or Pittsburgh? Why hey, those places? I right? got a a letter today that I want. When we first started, when I first started years ago. On, uh, or a year ago on Good Morning San Diego, I used to get the same note of criticism for somebody who just did not like, like me. You. And, I, and then I noticed he went away, 
And then I got an email from him, and I got to see if I can find it. It was absolutely adorable. Hang on. Well, what's the Keep definition? The, the, the definite. I don't know what the definition of success is, but the definition of failure is trying to please all the people all the time. You just can't do it. And, and you know what? I, I'm sure uh, Nathan Fletcher, if you were sitting right here, say, "Hey, listen. I know it's unpopular. I get it. I'm trying to do what's best for as many people as possible." And uh, okay, I just think it's wrong. All right. This was. Uh, I got this email today. And I'm not going to say who, but I mean, he did not like me when I first started on the news site. Paul, I want to apologize to you. When you started out on the morning show, I was against it. I thought, how could a sports announcer talk about news? Over the months, you've changed my mind. Now I look forward to the morning news. So I hope you accept my apology. P.S. Keep up the good work. There's people that I've uh, yeah, I liked before uh, that I haven't liked that, I, that have turned on me. I mean, have I've turned on them that I started to like. Yeah, well, I mean... Brian Gumbel being one of them. You, you start to like him now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, John, please have Nathan Fletcher explain why it's harmful to be in a bar where people are loud and stay for a prolonged period of time, but it's okay to be... Yeah, he tried to explain that. I think his quote was something to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing right now, the, uh, the protests were about, were about saving lives and being in a bar is about having a good time. So... He, he looked at the motivation behind the gatherings as a reason why you had to keep doing the protests. About, we're trying to cure racial wounds with the protests. Oh, this morning I called, uh... Carrie Reynolds, do you really, Carrie, do you really want to close the beaches for the 4th? Is that out of fear of people coming from L.A., or are you just out of fear for COVID-19 here in San Diego? Because I guarantee you, a lot of folks in uh, L.A. are heading our way. All right, they're... they're they for the fourth, don't you think? I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. I'm be I bet you that it's being talked about in high offices. It was real interesting. Um, somebody who used to live uh, in a uh, uh, communist country, um, and I don't recall the exact thing, but she said, this is what's going to happen. She said, they're going to give us a little bit and act like they're doing us a favor, and then they're going to take it all back. Boy, does she look like a genius round, huh? And I remember that when it first started, and I was, and she's like, and be careful about tearing down statues, be careful about, and I was like, I remember this the other day when it happened, because I was just like, holy cow, she is on point. Like, now, I would be reluctant to put a statue up. We were watching uh, Dave Scott and uh, the Lane statue going up, and I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, now if you're a statue somewhere, it doesn't really matter. What are they going to do with your statue? Uh, yeah, well, there's not enough bronze to completely get through the midsection. <laughs> um, okay, well, Robert, I agree with you. Well, and I, you could substitute Mr. Fletcher's name for any politician. If, if they are going to enact policies that detract from our economic well-being, then they should be in on the uh, cut down with us. Because everybody here had to take a cut, and every, you know, we also lost a lot of workers. And I know our company is not alone in that. So, never has been a communist country. They always get stuck as a dictatorship. Carrie's hospital. Uh, hospitals are not filling up. Replying to Carrie, that is true, and I know that for a fact because I know somebody who in a very prominent hospital who lives very close to me, and we talk about it almost daily. But they cannot in any way, I can't mention their name on social media or on the air out of fear of reprisal from their employer. But right now we are just slightly above what it would be a year ago pre-pandemic. Slightly above. And anybody in the healthcare business who is on this site, please refute that if I have that wrong, and especially if you're down in the South Bay, but as I understand it, our hospital and ICU capacity is more than adequate as it sits right now. And I, I want to be, if I'm stating something that's not accurate, I want to correct it before we go off the air in three minutes here. I hate the fact that, that somebody uh, like Gonzalez. Yeah, Holly, could, we're, we've already said that, Holly. I uh, could come on and say, this is what we're going to open, this is what we're going to close based on... And then why why aren't we going to revisit it for a month? What if uh, the numbers plummet the, starting tomorrow? Because right now, okay, the uh, 
composite tests are like this, and the desks are, are flat. I mean, if the desks don't start going like this too, then to me that is absolutely great news. It means that the, the uh, other than the folks who are in the uh, senior system, elderly folks, we're going to be okay. Okay, Patty, it says, uh, the American people are allowing this to happen. I survived the pandemic, Hong Kong flu in 1969. Nothing was closed down. People died. People survived. I think that's a very good point. You know, uh, perhaps our argument would change if uh, tomorrow we're having trouble um, breathing and we're wheezing and we have to go spend five days in the ICU. Maybe our, maybe well, our song would change. I hope that doesn't happen. Well, it happened to me before you because I'm significantly older. <clears throat> Well, I mean, you know, that's a valid point, but, you know, but I think that's I don't think I would change. I would say the, uh, what was that uh, Dr. Spock said on Star Trek? Um, uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. That's true. And what are the needs of the many right now? The I needs would, of the I many are to keep the economy strong. Yeah, I would agree with keep that. Keep the schools open. We, we, can't, we can't throw a year's education away for kids. We, we just can't do it. And, and I'll tell you why. Because the kids that are most damaged by this are the high at-risk kids. The kids who are counting on their athletic ability to get them into college education. The kids who uh, who play in sports, who who use the uh, participation in sports as an academic motivator and as a behavioral motivator. Who keep, you know, They're not going to risk getting in trouble or, or having their grades slip because they want to play athletics. Take that away from them. Take away those two motivating forces. The the, uh, the the kids with means were always going to find a way to get into education, so we're actually this Let me is ask you this, this is uh, unfair to the at-risk kids. Do you think um, do you think if uh, you know you, you reported that that Fox News Channel thing about Trump, do you think if he does drop out that Pence could beat Biden? Well, one, I don't think he's going to drop out, and two, right now, I, I mean, basically as it relates to the president, his biggest tool was those rallies and this pandemic has 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 taken his his best weapon out of the equation he could go out and attract 20 30,000 people pre-pandemic or he could fill any auditorium and those not only were those rallies a good uh, campaign fundraiser for him but they were also a great way of signing people up and and uh, doing their micro voting or whatever you call it and now that advantage has been taken away from them, and actually the advantage has swung in favor of the Democrats who, who, who feel that they have an advantage when it comes to stay-at-home voting. So I, I say it's a coin flip right now as to who, uh, and would Pence change that? No, no, I don't think, I don't think, like, you know, so now we're going to go through July, I, I so basically our, it's our, gonna be our, a election, interesting election our election season is going to be October. Mm -hmm. November. It, it's going to be August and October. It's going to be a 60 day election cycle. What happened in September? Oh, forgot about that one. September comes after August. So it's August, going to go. September. Well, because uh, September will be closed again. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> so we're going to have a 90 day election cycle. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, if there's debates, that swings into the president's favor. If there aren't a debates, that swings to Biden's favor. All right, you guys. Y'all have a good day. Look forward to reading your comments throughout the day. And we'll see you tomorrow on Good Morning, San Diego. All right, bye. You happy with that? Yes. Okay. Good. How many... Uh